Well, now with Max Durbin, welcoming you to the Assembly Center on the campus of Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This afternoon, what many consider to be the dream game of the 1976 NCAA tournament, perhaps a week early, pits the number one ranked Korean Hoosiers of Indiana University and the number two rated Warriors of Marquette in the championship of the Mid-East Regional. The winner today will advance to the NCAA Finals in Philadelphia next weekend for a shot at the ultimate in college basketball, the National Championship. Today's game matches two extremely successful basketball coaches and two highly talented teams, each getting here with a very different approach to the game, yet in many respects, much the same. We'll talk more about that and set the stage for this most dramatic contest in just one minute. This is the WIRA Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. Back at Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as we get set for today's ball game, the Mini Regional Championship Contest between Indiana and the Marquette Warriors. Head coach Al McGuire, head coach Bobby Knight, two interesting individuals, Max Durbin, and two guys that approach the ball game in different styles, but both are very successful with whichever style they decide to go with. You're quite right there. They both talk a lot of discipline, Don, but we, of course, uh, interpret discipline to do a little different way, but there's no question they're well coached, no matter what you want to call that discipline. Both very good on defense, with the Warriors only giving up something like 60 points a game, so you know their defense is up. Bobby Knight has come to the peak, the pinnacle that he is with a defensive team, although his teams lately have been scoring quite well. This is just, uh, I, the only thing that's wrong with this game, it ought to be the championship game for the NCAA. I think, Max, if we look at these two basketball teams, you take a look at, and analyzing the two clubs, Indiana, a physical basketball team with good jumping ability and good quickness, but Marquette maybe a little bit better jumping ability and more quickness, but not nearly as physical. Well, that's right. As we both heard Al McGuire talk yesterday at the press conference, he felt his team was a little fragile, as he called it. They're good leapers, they're tall, but they're not the beefy guys that uh, that we uh, see around the Big Ten. And he indicated, that, you know, in the future he probably is going to have to recruit more for the heavy players. So we'll see if beef can do uh, what they can do against the uh, more slender uh, thoroughbred style, as he likes to call it. Just a short of pass along, Max. Michigan, I guess, leads by five with 19 seconds to go in their ball game in the Midwest Regional. Well, I think Michigan stay, or Michigan's on its way to the championship game. I just can't see how it can miss, and I just hope the Hoosiers can get there to meet them. Wouldn't that be something with two Big Ten teams meeting as in the finals of the NCAA? Back to Jen as we look at these two clubs. Uh, Al McGuire, well, a free spirit, to say the least. Uh, he calls himself the original flower child, a guy who was out this morning riding a motorcycle. That's right. He came in about 10 o'clock. His hair all windblown. He's been out riding his bike. And so somebody asked Bobby Knight yesterday, did he uh, like to ride a motorbike? And he said, well, I tried once and couldn't get it started. And I kicked the thing in the ditch. <laughs> so uh, two entirely different kinds of people. McGuire out this morning. We've seen Knight uh, pretty close lift as he is most of the time in his room uh, right before we came out here. Very quiet, very pensive about the whole thing. I think the crowd here is one thing uh, we might comment on. Uh, last year, you remember, we were at the same point at Dayton, Ohio, down against Kentucky, a team we'd beaten by 20 points or so early in the year. The fans thought we were going to win it, even with May not in there. I don't feel that here today. The fans are quite uh, apprehensive about this whole thing, and I think it permeates all through there. One more thing about that, I think that Marquette is in. Here's the final. Michigan, 95, Missouri, 88. 95-88, Michigan now goes to the final four. But as I was saying, uh, you recall when we got off the elevator one time there this afternoon in a hotel where the Marquette fans were saying, Marquette said, uh, some fans said, remember, you've got to beat us, we don't really have to beat you. And I think that's, uh, that probably describes it. It's the case where here we're number one, we're supposed to win, we're trying to hold on, what a tragedy it would be for Indiana to lose after being undefeated, all these kind of things. And here's Marquette, they don't win, so they're number two. If they do win, see, we should have been one all the time. So I think the pressure is on Indiana, even though Bobby Knight says, you know, pressure is a figment of the imagination of sports writers and broadcasters. 14,327 in here at the Assembly Center today. It's a packed house. 
great number of Indiana fans on hand, likewise for Marquette. And we're sure the other representatives uh, here on the tournament, Alabama and Western Michigan, still have some stragglers on to see this championship ball game. Well, Rutgers is also to the final four, and we'll be back to line up for the lineup for this ball game after the 60-second break. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. Give you a look at the starting lineup for today's ball game, ladies and gentlemen. For the Marquette University Warriors, under head coach John McGuire, with a 27 and one record this year. At the forwards will be Maurice Bo Ellis, 69, a junior from Chicago, Illinois, a 12-point scoring average. Earl Payton, 6'6", the senior from Mount Vernon, New York, an 18-2 scoring average. At center, Jerome Whitehead, 6'10", a sophomore from Waukegan, Illinois, a 9 scoring average. At the guard, Floyd Walton, 6'1", 160, a senior from Chicago, Illinois, a 10-9 scoring average. And Butch Lee, 6'1", 180, a sophomore from New York, New York, a 13.9 scoring average. That's the starting forward for Indiana this afternoon is John May, 6'7", 218, a senior from Sandusky, Ohio, a 24-point scoring average, the player of the year. For Tom Abernathy, 6'7", 220, a senior from South Bend, Indiana, a 9.8 scoring average of the other forward. At center will be Ken Benson, 6'11", 245, a junior from Newcastle, Indiana, a 17.1 scoring average. At the guards, Bobby Wilkerson, 6'7", 200, a senior from Anderson, Madison Heights, an 8.3 scoring average. And Clint Buckner, 6'3", 203, a senior from Phoenix, Illinois, an 8.6 scoring average. Indiana under Bobby Knight, 29-0 this year. And Indiana, of course, against the Marquette team, but has lost only once. They are 27-1 under Al McGuire. We're about set for the tip-off, and we'll be back for the today's ball game of the Mid-East Regional Championship after this break from Hoosier Energy. We're set for the tip-off of the Mid-East Regional Championship between Indiana and Marquette. Jumping center, Bobby Walkerson is 6'7 for Indiana. And Bo Ellis for Marquette. Standing in at six foot nine. The officials are Brown and Jack Deedy. We're set for basketball here this afternoon at Baton Rouge at the Assembly Center. And now the official back to where a moment. Apparently the commercial not over with as of yet. Quinn Buckner is way down court as Earl Tatum is also down there. And so Buckner and Tatum, neither one around the circle. And now we're ready for basketball. Here's the captain ball by Marquette, Bo Ellen. He tips it off the line, Walton and Walton playing with a bat. Half fires it inside, it's almost taken away. Whitehead's got it. He goes to Butch Lee. Baseline jump shot around, no good. Whistle blows, and a foul called. Or, or a traveling violation, rather, against Marquette. So Indiana gets the basketball, some full court pressure. Down the floor, Tommy Abernathy to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson across the timeline, picked up by Tatum. Tatum out at the guard spot. Walton is down low against Scott Miller. Here's a bounce pass to May. Jumper in the air by Scotty. Good! Scott May hits the first two points of the ball game, and Indiana takes a 2 nothing lead. Lloyd Walton across the timeline. Right side pass comes to winner Earl Tatum. Tatum against May. And a foul is called on Scott May. So May picks up his first personal foul of the ball game. Tatum is the top scorer for Marquette, an 18-2 scoring average, and the, at least defensively, Scott May head up on Tatum. Here's the pass in bounds, and here's a driving shot by Tatum, and he puts it in. And it's a tie ball game at two all. Down the floor, Quinn Buckner across the timeline. Tie ball game in the end in Marquette. Buckner to Benson, hook shot is up, he got it! Ken Benson scores his first two of the game, and Indiana takes a 42 lead. Now Walton across the timeline, the floor general for the Marquette team, passes to Butch Lee, right side of Bo Ellis, down low to Walton, and he's traveled with the basketball. Roy Walton travels with the ball, he slid that time, and Indiana will get the basketball back, that's the second turnover by Marquette. Bobby Wilkerson now brings it across the timeline. Roy Walton is on Scott Murray, bounce pass to Buckner, jump shot up, he got it! Glenn Buckner scores his first two, and Indiana takes a 6 to 2 lead. Here is Butch Lee for Marquette, driving to the right side, trying to get past Buckner, cannot do it. Lee to the baseline, and now a foul called on Buckner, and Bobby Knight is off the bench, and he can't believe that call was first. 
Bobby Knight saying the forearm is being used by Butch Blue. And Silver foul on Buckner is his first of the ball game. Second team foul against Indiana. Marquette using a box and a one chaser on defense. We'll see what they do the next time down. Lee passes into Tatum. Back to Lee. Lee now works it to the right corner. To the baseline. Underneath. Puts the shot up. No good. Rebound. Whitehead taken away. Whistle blows. And a foul call. Foul underneath. We'll see if it's that Scott Bay. It's Antoine Buckner. So he has got two personal fouls. So two on Buckner, one on May, three team fouls against Indiana. And the officials calling it a lot closer than they did Thursday night. They certainly are. Now McGuire thought that would help his team if he got that kind of call. Jerome Whitehead goes to the stripe. Free throw around O'Gorn. Whitehead's first attempt of the line. He'll have an opportunity for one more. Six to two the score. Indiana on top by four. Whitehead trying to cut the lead to three. Second shot going. Whitehead's first point of the game. It's six to three. Indiana. Who's your basketball? Down to four. Indiana comes. Right now, Walton's on Scott May. The rest in the zone. Here's the pass to Benson. The ball tipped away and a foul call on Bo Ellis. So Ellis picks up his first foul of the ball game. First team foul against Marquette. And Indiana will have a basketball underneath the all bucket. Well, that's really interesting to put Walton no bigger than he is on Scott May. Walton also slowed a little bit by a calf injury. Pass outside comes to one of Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson looks down low to Benson. Shot up. Good! Benson beats Whitehead again and four points for Bennett. Indiana eight. Marquette three. A five-point Hoosier lead. Down to Bo Ellis from Brumbush lead. Ellis driving. Shot is up. Good. Bo Ellis throws right to the bucket, and he picks up his first two of the game. Eight to five to score. Indiana by three points. Bobby Wilkerson, top of the two dribble. Stopping and holding, looking for help. Fires a jump shot. Good. Bobby Wilkerson fires at home his first two of the game, and Indiana shooting. Ten to five to score. Across the timeline. Walton, the lead, to Ellis, inside, to Tatum, and he travels. Third turnover now for Marquette. Indiana will get the basketball back again, and they are hot shooting. Five for five, that's how hot they are. Ten to five of score, IU. Across the timeline, Bobby Wilkerson. Stopped by Tatum, looks for Buckner, finds Quinn into Benson, turns around, back to Quinn, jump shot by Buckner, short, rebound May, whistle blows. We get a foul call and Scotty May inside. And May now has two fouls. So May and Buckner have picked up two personals apiece. That is 14 fouls against Indiana. And the Hoosiers have two players in a little bit of trouble this early in the ball game with 17-20 gone. Across the timeline, bounce pass from Walton to Tatum. Tatum inside Ellis. Jump shot up is good. Bo Ellis with his fourth point of the game. 10 to 7 score, Indiana by three. Bobby Wilkerson across the timeline. To the top of the lane. Bounces into Benson. Turn around, jump shot, good. Dan Benson continues the hot plan with his sixth point of the long game. Indiana 12, Marquette 7. The Hoosiers still the mess in this basketball game now. We'll bring it across the midcourt line. Lee, left side of Walton. Lloyd Walton, dribbling across the lane. Looking for help. Now to the baseline. Stop cold, lost the handle. Whitehead up with it. Shot is up around. No good. And Tommy Abernathy clears the board. Abernathy for Indiana. Tommy bounces to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson across the midcourt line to the top of the lane. He slows it down, brings it outside, looks for help, gives to Buckner. Quinn fires a long jump shot. Good! Indiana is really sizzling the nuts here at the outset as Buckner picks up his fourth point. Now across the timeline, Butch Lee with a basketball to Lloyd Walton, and Walton gives to Tatum. Earl Tatum now against Bay, back outside of Walton. Walton looking for the shot. Goes to the baseline, and he's double rubble. So the Warriors making some mistakes that are costing them, and they have saved us four turnovers now in the ball game. Indiana by seven, a chance to up at the nine. Here is Wilkerson now. Bobby looks outside, goes left to May. Jump shot by Scotty is in and out. No rebound. Benson puts it back up and goes. What a move by Benson. Benson now with eight and a timeout. Marquette. 
And the score! Indiana 16, Marquette 7 with 15.50 to go in this first half. And listen to that Indiana crowd. We'll be back in a minute. 15.55 for Marquette for 60%. Both teams shooting well. Here is Lloyd Walton across the timeline to Earl Tatum and Tatum against Scott Murray. On the dribble, fires a long jump shot. No good, rebound, knocked away, put up by Whitehead, around and goes. Jerome Whitehead picks up his third point of the game. Indiana gets full court pressure now, and Bobby Walkerson breaks it, three on two, break, down the left side, into Benny, lost the handle. Out of bounds. Bad pass out of bounds by Walkerson, Benny couldn't hold on. That rebound a moment ago for the basket by Marquette was the first rebound they've had. So, Butchley with the ball, bounces left side to Tatum, Tatum in trouble. Now dribbles it out of it, holds on, fires it away to Butchley, Lee now driving to the right side, to the baseline, cut off, fires a jump shot, short, rebound. Glenn Buckner comes up with a loose ball. Buckner being hammered down there, finally comes up with it, and they call traveling. is called against Indiana. That's the third turnover against the IU. So Marquette will have a basketball. We'll make the inbound pass. He does the whitehead. Back outside it comes to Tatum and back to Lloyd Walton right side against Bobby Wilkerson. Walton now clears away to Butch Lee. Top of the lane left side of Bo Ellis. Ellis left side. Cross courts to Tatum. Jumper in the air. Go it. Earl Tatum finds the range for his fourth point. Full court pressure again, and Indiana's Tommy Abernathy trying to dribble out of trouble. Goes to Scott May, down the right side, bounces to Benson underneath. Scott good! Left-handed layup by Benson, he's got 10. Indiana now an 18 to 11 leader over Marquette with 14.33 to go, first half. Across the track, Lee looking right, clears it away to Tatum. Tatum now, goes left, comes back right, goes to Butch Lee outside. Lee drives it to the left wing, to the baseline, long 23-footer, gone. Lee has got his first two of the game, but it's 18 to 13, Indiana, 5-5. Five, five. Here is Quinn Buckner breaking the full court pressure, down the middle, gives in center May, jump shot up by Scotty, gone. Scott May has got his fourth point. Indiana red hot from the field. 20 to 13, IU by seven again. Here is Butch Lee from Marquette across the midcourt line. Lee, right side of Bo Ellis. Ellis holds on. Cross court to Tatum. Long 16-foot jumper. Go to Gant. Earl Tatum has got his sixth point, and he's been hot in this first half so far. Here is Buckner up to Scott May. May driving to the stop baseline. Comes back to Buckner. They'll set it up. Buckner dribbles it. Stop. Gives to May. May on the drive. Inside. Shot up. No good. Whistle blows. Who's it on? Scott May has just been called for his third foul of the ball game. May picks up foul number three. May with four points has three personal fouls and Wayne Radford will come off the bench for IU. Now Marquette has the basketball. Al McGuire won. Right side pass to Tatum. Tatum thinking, driving, stopping, shooting, and in and out goes. And went back in again as Tatum has got his eight points. 20 to 17 and Bobby Knight wants a timeout. Herb Brown now. Hold on. Bobby wants the technical call to McGuire for being off the bench when the clock is running. Here comes Wayne Radford now. And that may also have been why he wanted an official timeout so Radford come, could come in because the ball got away from the official. Here is Wilkerson now. Bouncing away to Radford. Up court to Buckner. Buckner driving right side. Crosses the key. Whistle and a foul. Earl Tatum is called for this personal. Tatum picks up his first of the ball game. Three points. So, Indiana ball as Wilkerson comes up with it. Bobby Holder. Down to the corner pass to Abernathy. May is out with three personal fouls here early. Bounce pass to Benson in the corner. Shot around. No good. Rebound tipped up. And good! Let's see who it belongs to. Buckner or Radford. I think Quinn got it. And Buckner's got good. 22 to 17. IU by five. Inside pass knocked away but picked up by Bo Ellis. Ellis back inside of Jerome Whitehead. Shot no good, and Tommy Abernathy clears the board. Abernathy looks for help. Clears it out to Buckner. Quinn across the timeline. Buckner works against Walton, and they go back into their zone defense. 
Now, half outside comes Orla Wilkerson. Wilkerson, top of the key dribble. Looking left, gives to Quinn. Buckner baseline inside of Benson. Off to Abernathy. Shot up, no good. No foul call. And the ball belongs to Marquette. Down the floor, Taylor to Lloyd Wolf. Wong to the baseline. He's cut off. Turns around. Brings it back outside of Taylor. Now to Butch Lee. Right side of Bo Ellis. Ellis on the wing. Threw it cross court to Walton. Walton driving. Shot is up. He missed it. Tip up no. Ellis with a rebound up in there. Bo Ellis with a lead by Marquette now. Wilkerson behind the back to Quinn Buckner. Buckner double team. Drives it left side. Inside of Abernathy. Baseline. Stop. Back out to Quinn. Buckner now, fakes the shot, Abernathy, baseline, jumper, good, in and out, no good. Rebound, tip to Wilkerson, 16-foot jumper, good. Bobby Wilkerson now with four. Indiana 24, Marquette 19, and Indiana continues to shoot tremendous field goal percentage here. Right side pass comes to Wood Allen. Ellis for Marquette now, inside pass to Jerome Whitehead, he passes away inside, a traveling violation called on Butch Lee. McGuire now sending in Bernard too for the first time. Five turnovers in the ball game for Marquette. And so Toon in the ball game. He replaces Whitehead at the center position. Now Bobby Wilkerson. Works it left side, bounce pass to Radford. Back outside of Wilkerson. Bobby bounces it with Abernathy. Jump shot up. He got it. Tom Abernathy gets his first bucket of the ball game and it's 26-19 to Indiana. Hoosiers again taking Walton right side of Bernard Toon. Toon now bounces back out to Tatum, top of the key, left side of Walton. Lob pass to Ellis. Ellis back out to Walton. Walton now with a basketball on the baseline, dribbling it. Now faking the shot, bounces in, knocked away, scramble, Radford fight for it, jump ball. Wayne Radford and Bo Ellis battling for the loose ball. And they'll jump it up at the attacking circle of Marquette. Mismatch here in the jumping department. Radford standing in at 6'3", Ellis at 6'9". Now we're really seeing some sensational shooting out here by both teams, and it's not because it's poor defense. No, it certainly is not. They are really strapping on defense. Here's the chip, easily controlled by Marquette. Butch Lee with it. Fakes the shot, goes to Walton. Jumper from 18, around, no good. Tipped up and picked off by Quinn Buckner. Buckner down, down the floor. Quinn across the timeline. Left side dribble. Stops inside the Benson. Hook shot is up and Jeff Benson hits again. Benson now with 12. 28 to 19 the score. Indiana leading it right now by nine. Here is Butch Lee. Biggest lead of the game for IU. Right side pass to Bernard Toon. Two with a ball in the right wing. Looking for Tatum. Crosses over to Ellis. Lellis lost the ball. And it's going to be saved by Toon. Toon with some good hustle that time, making the save, Butch Lee to Tatum. Tatum right wing, he's against Radford, back top of the key and a drive, Butch Lee down the middle, puts it up and missed it, way back, Ken Benson for Ione's foul. Butch Lee or Bernard Toon got him, both of them got him. Everybody knows. Hard is up. Wayne Radford's first two of the game. Ball got away from the officials. Marquette basketball and Indiana's taking a 30 to 19 lead, an 11 point margin. Indiana hitting 15 out of 21 shots right now. So the ball belongs to Marquette. They trail by 11. Ellis with the ball out to Butch Lee. Lee now fires a long 20 footer around, no good. Rebound. Benson clears the boards like an animal out there. He is just tearing them apart. 30 to 19 IU. Hoosiers with an 11-point lead in the basketball as Wilkerson crosses the line, bounces in the corner to Radford. Radford to Benson. He turns around to Abernathy. A whistle blows. Traveling called on Tom Abernathy. So the turnover against Indiana. And now with the basketball gives to Rosenberger. Left side of Bo Ellis on the wing. Crosses over to Tatum. Free throw line. Jump shot is around. No good. Tatum rebound. Back up and got it this time. Tatum with 10 points. Here is Bobby Wilkerson now. Up court pass goes to Wayne Radford. Radford turns around, throws it back outside, it goes to Wilkerson. Wilkerson looks in, bounces to Abernathy. Ab back off to Wilkerson. Wilkerson now going to the corner to Radford. Radford bounces to Benson, turns around, dribbles, passes outside, it's knocked away, Radford saves it. 
Wayne turns around. Outside pass to Bobby Wilkerson. Good play there. Great aggressiveness out of the other part. Bounce to Benson. Turning around. Hook shot is no good. Rebound Buckner. And Quinn tried to save it. He does to Wilkerson and saves it to Rafford. Rafford in the corner. Pass to Buckner. Buckner now. Back outside. It goes to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson now. Back to Buckner. Buckner right wing. The top of the key to Wilkerson. The Spider-Man back to Quinn. Long jumper in the air. In and out. No. Rebound tapped up out of bounds. It'll belong to Marquette. Benson got the land. It's back in the ball game. It's center. Here is Whitehead with the ball. Left side pass to Rosenberger. He fires a long bomb. Good. Gary Rosenberger with his first field goal of the game. And that was a long shot from out of the country. 30-23, and Marquette back to within seven now. Indiana is led by as many as 11. Here's the pass crossed over to Radford in the corner. Wayne back outside of Wilkerson, now to Buckner. Quinn facing, dribbling one. Down in the corner to Abernathy, back to Buckner, back to Wilkerson. Bobby fires a jump shot in the air, no good. Rebound fought for, knocked away and pulled out by Walton to Marquette. And now the Warriors, a chance to cut that 11-point lead down to five. Here is Walton, walking it across the timeline, throwing it down, looking in, giving to Whitehead. Whitehead in trouble, double team, gives to Rosenberger. He's to the baseline drive, stops, inside pass taken by Tatum. Tatum driving, his shot up around, no good. A whistle blows and a foul is called. Bobby Wilkerson, I believe, picked up the personal. Wilkerson's first of the ball game. So Indiana now committed 16 fouls with 7.16 to go. The next foul will put him in the one and one. Indiana now beginning to miss just a little. They could not keep up that hard pace. And here's where they're going to start missing Scott May now. He's the guy that comes through in the, in the punch. There's the jump shot up or the free throw up. Little jumper by uh, Tatum that time, but he's got his 11th point of the game. Opportunity for one more. He almost leaps in the air with his shot. And he pops his second one. He's got 12. 30-25, and Marquette has cut the lead down to five points. Wilkerson up court to Tommy Abernathy. Half back to Wilkerson, and Bobby breaks it across the timeline. Wilkerson now bounces in the corner to Radford. Wayne back outside of Wilkerson. Wilkerson now slowly on the dribble, stops, gives inside the belly. Benson back out to Wilkerson. Wilkerson into Benson, off to Radford. Jumper by Wayne is up short. Rebound, fought for, foul called. And Ted Benson, I believe, has picked up the first goal, his first of the game. So Benson with his first foul of the ball game, the seventh Indiana team foul, and the ball going to the free throw line, and Marquette's under the floor for the one and bonus. Well, the kind of calls we're getting today here, Don, is the kind that are hurting Indiana because they are a physical team, and the officials are just not letting them play that way. 62% free throw shooter at the line and Gary Rosenberger. Rosenberger is six foot south four from Milwaukee. 2.7 scoring average in the year. He already has a bucket in the ball game. So he goes to the stripe with one and one. He can cut the lead. Indiana's Tommy Abernathy with a rebound. On Abernathy's back, Bo Ellis with no call. Here is Radford off to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson now circles it back outside. 1-2-2 two, two zone defense being used by Marquette. Buckner in the corner pass to Radford. Radford back outside of Buckner, inside of Benson. Turns around, knocked away, and pulled away by Marquette. 30-25. Marquette trailing by five. A chance again to cut the lead down to three. Here's the pass, Walton to Rosenberger, down to the corner to Ellis. Back outside of Tatum on the drive, shot is up, around goal. Earl Tatum with his 14th point of the game. 30-27 to score. Three-point lead right now for Indiana. It's been cut from 11 points. And so Marquette on a strong comeback. Wilkerson into Benson. Turns around to Radford. Jump shot by Wayne. Around. No good. And Indiana shooting has really fallen off now as Tatum comes up with a rebound. Now across the timeline, Lloyd Walton. 5.52 to go in the first half. Walton to Rosenberger, now inside Ellis, and Ellis back out to Whitehead, a long jump shot in the air, going. Whitehead with his fifth point, and the lead has been cut to one, and a timeout Indiana will score. Indiana, 30, Marquette, 29, 539 to go in this first half. We'll be back in one minute after the 60-second break. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball 
the Assembly Center at Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on the campus of Louisiana State University. Indiana leads Marquette by only a point, 30 to 29, with 5:39 to go in the first half of basketball. Indiana had as much as an 11-point lead early. Scotty May out of the ball game now with three personal fouls. That's made a difference. Indiana's shooting has really fallen off. It has. They've hit only one out of their last five shots. They're now 15 of 26 for 58 percent. Marquette 13 of 24 for 54 percent. So they have hit uh, five of their last six shots. That's how this thing has turned around. Well, Benson, Radford, Abernathy, Buckner, and Cruz. Jimmy Cruz now the ball game for Indiana. So Bobby Wilkerson takes the rest. Jerome Whitehead, Butch Lee, Lloyd Walton, who, uh, Tatum, and Ellis coming into the ball game now for Marquette. Indiana will have a ball with a one-point lead. Full court pressure being applied by... The Marquette Warriors, Jimmy Cruz slaps the basketball, fakes it, fires it up court to Wayne Radford, and Radford steps on the line. Comes Butch Lee, down the right side, to the corner. Lee bounces back outside Ellis. Ellis now, looking in. Can't find the cross-court pass, goes to Lee to Whitehead. He tries to work, can't do it, back outside the Lee. Now with Ellis, now in the corner, it comes to Tatum. Tatum. On the dribble against Radford. Circles to the right side. Buckner gets knocked out. Back off to Butch Lee. He drives it. He fires. He misses the shot. Rebound. Kent Benson got hammered again. And Tatum is finally called for the foul. Earl Tatum picks up his second foul of the ball game. Indiana will get it out of bounds. That's only the 14th foul called against Marquette. 5-10 to go in this first half. Indiana a one-point leader. They bring out a mop now to wipe off the floor from the perspiration when Buckner hits the duck down low. Now coming into the ball game, new face for Marquette, Bill Neary, a 6'5 junior from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. He replaced Earl Tatum for a rest who has been the hot hand for Marquette with 14. Now Jimmy Cruz, pops the big court line. Cruz, right side of the foot. With a Tommy Abernathy. Jimmy directing traffic to Abernathy. Abernathy back to Cruz. Long jumper by Jim. Good! Jimmy Cruz pops his first bucket of the ball game on his first attempt. And it's 32 to 29. Scott May has been on the bench for a long time now with three personal fouls. He has four points in the game. Here is Bo Ellis looking, crossing the key on the dribble, driving left side. Stop. Jumper. Good. Bo Ellis pops his eighth point of the ball game. 4.31 left in this first half, and Marquette trailing by one. 32 to 31 the score. Indiana on top with Cruz on the dribble right to the wing. Baseline pass to Radford. Wayne dribbles looking for Benson. Can't find him. Now Radford shoots and misses. Rebound taken by Roach. Or Neary, rather, for Marquette. Off to Butch Lee and down the floor to Walton. And now Marquette a chance to take the lead. Across the timeline. Here's Walton. Walton with a basketball, gives away to Bo Ellis. Ellis goes down toward the corner against Abernathy, spins away from him, stops, cross-court bounce past to Butch Lee. Now on the left side, it comes to Neary. Back outside of Butch Lee, top of the lane, driving drive right, does, shot is up, no good. Rebound fought for, hammered inside, was Indiana, and Bo Ellis called for the foul. Ellis has his second foul to throw the right side of the wing. Cut off, looks in. Trying to cross court, does to Abernathy, back into Benson, shot, partially blocked, Valavicious fake, shot is up, it's around, no good, and a whistle and a foul inside. Bernard Toon, I believe, is going to be called for the personal. Bernard Toon picks up the personal foul, his first of the ball game. And so, going to the free throw line, will be Rich Valavicious with two shots covered. Walton's quickness has been affected, Max. He's still limping a little bit out there. Yeah, he has. You can see something he's got bound around the calf, but he still is so quick. Valavicious pops home a free throw, an important one, his first one of the ball game. 33-31 and in Indiana by two, and Val trying to make it a three-point IU lead with 3.35 to go. That's the first free throw. The second is up in the air. No good. Rebound is pulled away by Bernard, too. So Indiana, the free throw line for the first time today can invert on one out of two. Here is Lloyd Walton now for Marquette. Right side of Bernard Toon. Toon has replaced uh, Bo Ellis in the ball game. Here's a pass back outside to Whitehead, now away. 
to Neary and back outside the to Toad. And now Marquette flying kind of a four-corner offense out there, trying to run that clock down. 33-31 the score, and Indiana's just back, not going after him right now. And Lloyd Wong with the ball, puts it away to Butch Lee. Lee with it, on the dribble. And well, the official is saying, move the ball toward the basket to the offensive ball club, Marquette. And here's the pass to Neary now. Neary gives it away, comes outside to Butch Lee and Lee dribbling right side. 2.45, down on the clock now. Here's Walton driving inside, fires it out to Lee. Lee against Cruz in the corner to Walton. Long jumper is up, no good. Rebound, Abernathy got hammered underneath, and Whitehead comes up with the ball. Here's another long jumper, it's no good. Battle for it underneath. There's a foul called. Who's it going to be on? Whitehead is called for the foul, I believe. Boy, he is really coming under 7% of the year from the free throw stripe. Shot is up. Good. Quinn has got seven now. Recent ball games, Max, his confidence is picked up in the stripe, it seems, as well as the rest of his shooting. He's hit some very key ones, as we both know. So Buckner again will have one more, and he can make the Indiana lead a four-point advantage with 2.29 left in this first half. Buckner eyes it, flies it, misses, rebound Benson, knocked away from him, pulled off in there by Bernard too. It comes to Tatum. Gives away to Walton. Indiana by three, 34-31. Marquette ball and Neary with it outside of Walton. Walton on the fake, fires a long jumper. It's no good, the rebound, Whitehead with a basketball. He goes back to Walton, and Walton flies again, and this time he got it. Lloyd Walton with his first field goal of the day, he's got two. 34-33, Indiana by one with exactly two minutes to go, first half. Marquette in a 1-2-2 zone. Cruz inside of Abernathy, dribbles through the baseline, back to Cruz, Jimmy fires a long bomb short, Rebound knocked away to Battle Vicious. Outside pass to Cruz. Now to Abernathy. Tommy drives. Baseline. Shot. Good. Great move by Abernathy. Tommy with his fourth point of the game. 36 to 33 the score. Indiana again by three. Walton with the ball brings it across the timeline. High bounce. Now goes down to the low side. Right side on the wing against Quinn Buckner. Back outside to Neary. Back to Walton. Walton faking. Now fires the long bomb again. Missed it. Rebound knocked away inside a foul call. Who's it going to be on? Abernathy. Shooting team. Shot is up and going. Bernard Till with his first point of the day and an opportunity for one more. 123 to go. 36-34 and he can cut the lead down to one. Toon. 6'8", freshman from Yonkers, New York. Flies it in the air and Kansas. Bernard Toon with his second point of the game. It's back to an Indiana one-point lead at 36-35. Now, Quinn Buckner gives it away to Jimmy Cruz, and Cruz now will walk it up across the timeline. Cruz now gets it across the stripe, and he brings it out to the left corner now. Indiana wanting Marquette to come out after them on that zone defense. Jimmy Cruz way away, nobody guarding him within six feet. Back to Quinn Buckner, and Buckner is saying to official Irv Brown, they got to come out after us, do they not? And they finally do within six feet, so Cruz with the basketball holds on, holding on to the basketball, fires it away to Buckner. Walton and the official Irv Brown having a little confrontation out there, a discussion we should say. Jimmy Cruz banking, giving away to Tommy Abernathy, back to Quinn. Buckner looks. Back outside to Cruz. 37 seconds to go. Indiana by one. 36-35. Off the Benson. Benny back outside of Jimmy Cruz now. 30 seconds left. Cruz lobs it away to Buckner. Buckner holding on to it. Back to Benson. Kent looking at the cross-court possibility. Nobody coming after him. 18 seconds to go. Back off to Buckner. Outside to Cruz. 15 seconds left. Jimmy holds on. Cross course it again with 10 seconds to go. Buckner with him. Now Quinn Buckner says go. Jimmy Cruz with the offense. Seven seconds. Look. Bounces to Buckner. Quinn back outside and looking at his foul. Traveling violation. Buckner called for traveling. Bobby Knight saying, okay, don't worry about it. Two seconds left. Marquette will have the ball. So Lloyd Wong will make the inbound play. 
The play was away from us, so there's no way we could tell whether he did or not, but it sure looked like he got hammered out there by Walton. So now, the offense from Marquette being set up. Here's a baseball pass, and it's thrown to Toon, long 30-footer, and that's it. End of the first half, he missed the shot and the score. Indiana 36, Marquette 35. We'll be back with our halftime show after the 60-second break. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. Let's look at the individual scoring in the first half. First of all, for the Marquette Warriors, Earl Tatum has fired home the top points for that with 14 in the first half. He had six field goals and a pair of free, th uh, free throws for 14 at the half. He has also picked up one personal foul. For Bernard Toon, two free throws, two points of the half. He has one personal foul. Gary Rosenberger has a field goal for two points of the half. For Maurice Boellis, he has four field goals, eight points of the half, and two personal fouls. For Jerome Whitehead, two field goals, one free throw, one personal foul, a total of five points of the half. Lloyd Walton has a field goal for two and a half. Butch Lee has a field goal for two and a half. He has one personal foul. Now look now at the individual scoring for Indiana in the first half of play. Scott May sat out about 13 minutes for the first half with three personal fouls. May with two field goals, three personals, a total of four points. Chad Benson has six field goals, a total of 12 points at the half. Bobby Wilkerson has two field goals for four points at halftime, one personal foul. Benson has one personal. Glenn Buckner has seven points on three field goals and one free throw, two personal fouls, a total of seven now for Glenn Buckner. And as we said, Wayne Rapid with a field goal, as did Jimmy Cruz, both with two points of the half, one point for Rich Valavicious from the free throw line to round out the individual scoring for IU. Matt Tom, a look at those team statistics. Frank John, in the first half, Indiana hit 17 out of 30 shots. That's uh, considerably less than they were hitting uh, at the very beginning. with still some outstanding beauty. That's like 56.7% for the Marquette Warriors. They had 15 of 33. Now that is 45%. Indiana, as you may recall, started out the game hitting their first six shots. And they were hitting at one point, 14 out of 20 for 70 percent but with scott may going out and kent benson cooling off a little bit they dropped off in their shooting and here at halftime they lead by just the one point 36 to 35 from the foul line indiana is two of four the marquette warriors five of seven indiana's biggest lead 11 points in that first half but a four minute and 56 second drought with Indiana leading by a score of 30 to 19 before Indiana could get back on the board. They were leading by a 30 to 29 score, and since then it's been really nip and tuck. Well, here at halftime again, the score 36 35, Indiana and Tampa Bar. We'll be back with our halftime guest, athletic director Paul Beastel of Indiana University after the 60 second break. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. <laughs> Back again at Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Indiana leading Marquette by a score of 36-35. We're at halftime in the championship game of the mid-regionals, mid, uh, mid-east regionals. Alongside me is Paul Diesel, who is now on the job as athletic director. We've talked to him a couple of times, but uh, he was trying to get himself relieved from duties down in uh, the Ohio Valley. And Paul, welcome officially now to Indiana University. Thank you very much, Max. Uh, Real pleasure to be on board. I must say I picked a very opportune time to join. I can't imagine a better time than when your team is in the regional play. And of course, I'm very, very proud of the way they've conducted themselves so far. Paul, oh, this is your, old, your hometown down here for a while when you were with the LSU Tigers, uh, the Chinese Bandits of Fame and so forth. I suppose you've had quite a time since you came back down here. Well, it's been a lot of fun because, you know, it's, it's been uh, almost 20 years since I first came down here. And we were here seven years, so coming back and seeing a lot of our old friends is a real pleasure. Tonight after the game, uh, we're 
a lot of my old players are going to have a party for me, and so Ann and I are looking forward to that. But all of those things are really incidental to what we're here for. And at this stage in the game, I, I guess I, I can't imagine when I have been more nervous, upset, or excited at a basketball game than I was in our Alabama game just a couple of days ago. I don't think I was ever so nervous in my life, and I thought we'd beat a real fine team. And then today, it's more of the same, because when you get to this stage, there isn't anyone in the tournament that's not really a top-notch team. And we knew before we started that we were be going to play, going to be playing one of the great basketball teams in the country. They only lost one game this year. They're ranked number two, as everyone knows. But I think that uh, they have an awful lot of ability. Now, we jumped out to about a nine-point lead, and it looked awfully easy. I just couldn't believe it was going to be that easy, and it turns out it hasn't. We jumped into some foul trouble with uh, Scott May getting three very questionable uh, calls. Of course, I'm very questionable. But uh, uh, that kind of made a change in us, and still, even with Scotty out of there, we managed to stay we're still ahead by one point, but we are still ahead. And I think that uh, that's a tribute to the way the rest of the gang on the team picked up the flag for them. So I've really been proud of this team. I, I guess the reason I was so doggone nervous is that I don't think I've ever been around a basketball coach that uh, I've been as close to as I have Bobby Knight through the years. And then, of course, uh, I've gotten acquainted with the players on the Indiana squad. And they're such a super bunch of young men that I I don't think anyone that has any association with them would not be impressed with the caliber that they are. Back once again at the Assembly Center, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Mid-East Regional Championship, Indiana, 36, Marquette, 35 at the half. We're set for the second half tip off. Indiana, of course, up by 11 at one point of the first half. Had to stifle off a mark cut surge late in the first half as Scott May sat out 13 minutes with three personal fouls, only four points. Ken Benson picked up the slack with 12 points in the first half of play. We're about set for the second half tip-off. And a look now, Jimmy Cruz is in the ball game, but one of the guys in place of Bobby Wilkerson. Scott May, Jim Cruz, Ken Benson, Tom Abernathy, and Quinn Buckner. Bo Ellis go by Indiana's Tom Abernathy. Abernathy got the tip away from Benson and off to Cruz, and Jimmy brings it across the midcourt line. Cruz, dribbling toward the right side. Stops on the wing. Looks for help. Bounces to Benson. Benny inside, looking. Now dribbles with it. Across, turns around, back outside of Quinn Buckner. Baseline to May. Scotty turns around, dribbles to the wing, off to Abernathy. Tom now brings it back to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz, looking for help, goes to Ken Benson, off to Quinn Buckner. Whistle blows, inside, what do we got? Foul call against Marquette. Foul is called against Lloyd Walton, his first foul of the ball game. I think when referee Twitty blows his whistle, everybody holds their breath trying to figure out who he's going to call it on next. Inside, Scott May to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz looks, and now dribbles it outside. Against that zone, and Jimmy Cruz just standing back and waiting. Now Jimmy starts to move. Bounces away to Scott May. Scotty inside the Buckner, knocked away, and picked off by Tatum. Bad pass inside, and Marquette's got the ball, trailing by one, and a chance to take the lead to start the second half. Here is Butch Lee to Bo Ellis. Back outside the lead. Lead riding right. Goes to the baseline. Cut off in there. Now looking for the shot. Fires it up and got it. Butch Wig has Marquette the lead for the first time in the ball game. 37-36 to start the second half. Jimmy Cruz across the timeline now. Bounces away to Scott Bird. May bounces to Quinn Buckner in the corner. Quinn fires a jump shot up. No good. Way back Butch Wig. Lee clears the board for Marquette. Down the floor, Lee across the midcourt line. Goes right side, Earl Tatum. Tatum now against Bay, back outside of Country Lee. Lee driving for the corner baseline, stop, jump shot in the air, no good. Rebound, Scott May's got it, and a foul call in Jerome Whitehead. 
Whitehead called for a second bottle of the ball, Dan. Championship game. Jimmy Cruz on the drive for IU. Stops and gives to Buckner. Now left side to May. Long bomb gone. Scotty May with a six point of the ball there. 38-37. IU by one. Now Marquette comes back the other way as Lloyd Walton brings it across the line to Bush Lee, not Earl Tatum. Tatum with the ball, tries to circle, gives to Bo Ellis, Ellis off to Lee. Lee on the drive to the corner, gives to Walton. Walton against Buckner now, driving in the baseline, underneath. Passes outside, it goes to Tatum, he lost it. Picked up by Tommy Abernathy on the steal. Now Jimmy Cruz brings it back the other way. Cruz to the top of the line, driving right, gives to Buckner, clear, dribbles once, traveling violation on Buckner. So that is the night five against Jimmy Cruz, looking inside, can't find Whitehead, puts it back out to Tatum, now to Lee again. Lee, trying to drive the baseline, comes back to Walton, Walton the way to Tatum, way outside. Tatum now, driving toward the left side corner, faking. Back out to Walton, Walton now again to Tatum on the wing. Tatum fires from 20 feet, no good, rebound, loose ball, picked up by Tommy Abernathy. Ab clears the Kent Benson up court to Scott Miller. May now, down the right side, stop, looks for help, throws it down and gets it back out to Abernathy, not to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz with a basketball on the dribble, bounces to the corner to May, May's jump shot up, good! Johnny May has got his eight points. 40 to 37, Indiana by three now. 16.47 to go in the final half of basketball. Here's the pass to Butch Lee. Lee down the right side on the wing. Comes back outside of Tatum. Now with a Walton left side on the wing. He fires a long jump shot. Around no good. Rebound tipped up by Ellis. No battle for it underneath. We got a foul call. It's going to be against Whitehead. Jerome Whitehead with his third personal foul. So Whitehead now with three personals. Indiana basketball once the general Hoosiers with a three-point lead, a chance to increase it. This thing's going exactly the opposite this half now, as far as fouling is concerned, with the Warriors picking up all the early fouls. Now, Buckner and Cruz discussing it as they bring the ball across the timeline, and Jimmy Cruz works it across the stripe, the high bounce. Dribbles to the right side, to other circle, into Benson. Benny baseline, fake, turns around, back to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz to Abernathy, baseline jumper by Tom, long, rebound tipped up, a battle for it, a fight underneath, and it's picked up by Earl Tatum. Tatum to Lloyd Walton, and Walton across the midcourt line. Walton with a basketball, outside on the dribble. Stop, gives the ball, Ellis left side. Ellis now against Abernathy, bounces it off to Tatum. Or second Whitehead, now to Walton. Walton's jumper off the glass, no good, rebound, what for? Bo Ellis has got it, out to Butch Lee. Lee right side to Walton. Walton now, bringing it back outside again to set up the offense. Indiana's man-to-man -man has been tough. Ellis now, cross court to Whitehead. Whitehead, long jump shot up, good. 15-foot jumper by Whitehead for his seventh point of the game. 3-2 zone, Cruz passes to Scott May, jumper in the air, going again! Scott May now with 10. Indiana up to a three-point lead one more time. 42, 20, 39 to score. Here's Cruz trying to steal, he fell down. Across the timeline, this is Earl Tatum. Tatum to the baseline, cut off, fires the jumper off the glass in there. Tatum now with 16 points. 14 of those in the first half. 42-41. Trading buckets now in Indiana by one point. Who's your basketball? Jimmy Cruz behind the back to Tom Abernathy. Baseline jumper is good. Tom Abernathy was six. 44 to 41, and Indiana back to a three-point advantage. Across the timeline with the ball is Butch Lee. Lee now, outside, right side pass to the wing to Boylan. Ellis now dribbles once, gives it outside to Lee again. Lee to the left side, tries to cut the corner. Shot is up, no good, rebound tipped up, around by Whitehead, no again. A battle, a foul on Benson. Ken Benson, and will be made by... Walton, he fires it out to Butch Lee. Lee now, left side pass on the wing, it goes to Ellis. Bo Ellis, outside again to Lee, Lee to the right side on the wing to the baseline, cut off. Now circles it out again to the wing. Flips it away to Bo Ellis to paint him in the corner to Walton. Jumper in the air is no good. Rebound, Benson, he was hammered again. Whitehead shot number four. Jerome Whitehead with his fourth personal foul. Benson easily with a rebound that time, and the arm was wrapped around him. 
And so four personals down, a timeout of the ball with a score. Indiana 44, Marquette 41, 14, 17 to go in the basketball game. And we'll be back in one minute. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. <laughs> May with a ball, dribbles it out of trouble. Up course is Tommy Abernathy. The break is on. Tommy stops, passes to Benson. Lost it, got it back. Kent turns around, shoots the score. Benson now with 14 points. His first two in the second half. 46 to 41, IU by five. Here is Butchley. Down to Bo Ellis. Ellis now, holding on the right wing, back to Lee. Lee now, driving right side, stops. Picked off again, giving to Bo Ellis, back to Lee in the corner. Lee holding. Again to Bo Ellis. That side of Walton. Right side pass on the wing to Tatum. Tatum holding against Murray. Bounces to the back to Walton. Walton scrambling for it. Saves it from going over and back. Walton now down to the left side wing. Lloyd Walton on the dribble. Brings it back outside again to Butch Lee. Lee holding the basketball. Gives it away to Tatum. Earl Tatum against Scott Murray. Pass the screen. Jump shot up. No good. Rebound. Picked off by Walton. Lloyd Walton for Marquette. Brings it back out of side again. And he's dribbling slowly. Walking the ball. Giving to Tatum. Tatum now. Bounces away to Jerome Whitehead. Inside of Bo Ellis. But Ellis had it knocked away by Cruz. Scramble. Tommy Abernathy with a save. And the steal. Baseball pass for Clint Buckner. And Buckner slows it down. Buckner now. Just to the way to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz with the basketball. Inside of Abernathy. Jumper in the air. Good! Tommy Abernathy with his eighth point of the ball there. And Indiana takes the lead. Al McGuire on the floor. He should have gotten a technical. I don't know if he did or not. Gates of 41, Indiana by seven. Time out of the floor with 12.54 to go in this ball game. And Indiana suddenly jumps and bucks by seven points. Well, Al McGuire finally picked up the technical foul, Max, after he had walked around a little bit. He went over and kicked the table at the scores bench, and that got the technical from Aaron Brown. And Scotty May hits the technical punt. May has got his 11th point of the game, and Indiana takes a 49-41, eight-point lead over Marquette, and Indiana will have a basketball back again. That's a costly technical because uh, Indiana, I mean, Marquette had the ball. He not only lost the point, he lost the ball. Al McGuire is still walking around over there. This could turn into a three-point. Crows now. Works that side. Slowly on the dribble. Works it left. To the work. Now looks for help. Still on the move against Walton. Jim Cruz with a basketball. Crossing over outside. Looking against the zone. Dribbling right. Giving away to Buckner. Back pass to Murray. Scotty back to Quinn. Back to Murray again. Fakes the shot. Dribbles it. Tatum fell on him and no call. Here is May again. Holding the ball. Right side pass to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz to Quinn Buckner. Buckner stops. Back to Cruz. Cruz looks in the corner for Murray. Can't find him. Holds on to it. Looks for help. Just to Ken Benson. Out to Buckner. Quinn looks. Inside of Benson. Jump shot up. No good. Rebound fought for. Out of bounds. Indiana will have it. Butch Lee. Touched it last. Inside of Jimmy Cruz. Cruz has come in to stabilize this team. Jimmy gives away to Buckner. And a foul could have been called on Tatum. Tatum now picks up personal foul number three. So his third of the ball game. And that'll send in the end of the free throw line again. And Al McGuire, I believe, wants another timeout. Timeout of the floor. The score. 1209 to go in the ball game. Indiana leads it 49 to 41 over the Marquette Warriors. We'll be back in one minute. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. Once again, back at the Assembly Center, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Don Fisher along with Max Sherman. The score, Indiana 49, Marquette 41. 1209 to go in the basketball game. IU ball, Tommy Abernathy gives to Quinn Buckner. And Buckner now looks inside. Passes it back outside of Jimmy Cruz. Inside of Abernathy, back to Quinn. And Quinn on the dribble, bounces away to Cruz. Jim Cruz now, dribbling the ball outside again. Working it, gives inside of Benson, outside of Buckner. Buckner now on the dribble. Back away to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz just directing traffic out there. Marquette in his own defense, not coming out very quickly after Indiana. And the clock is running with 11.40 to go. Here is Buckner now. Back outside of Cruz in the corner. Jimmy back off of Buckner. Buckner against the zone. They want Marquette to come out of that zone defense. At least a lot farther out than they have been. Cruz now. 
Stands back outside just to Scott May. Again to Jimmy Cruz and right back off to Quinn Buckner in the bench and back to Buckner. Now away to Cruz. Indiana wants Marquette out of that zone. Here comes Cruz holding on to it. Jimmy faking, looking. Walton now within six feet so he can hold on to it forever. Now to Benson and back to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz holding on again. Just standing with a basketball. Back off to Quinn Buckner. Buckner holds on to it. Looks inside. Back outside of Jimmy Cruz. Cross court pass that time from Quinn. Now away to Cruz. Cruz holding on again as Walton comes up to picking up a little tighter. Walton is the only man really outside. Here is Quinn Buckner now dribbling toward the basket. Spins back outside again to Jim Cruz. 10.38 to go. The clock is running down, and Indiana wants Marquette out of that zone, and now they come out of it, and here comes Benson off to Cruz and back outside to Scott Murray. Now to Cruz. Cruz crosses back to Murray. May down the lane. Puts it up. He had it blocked away a goaltending. Goaltending against Bo Ellis. And Scott Murray picks up his 13th point of the game. 51-41, and now Indiana leads it by 10. 10.20 to go. Their biggest lead of the game was 11 in the first half, only to have Marquette cut it down to one at halftime. Here is Butch Lee. Lee down in the corner, baseline. Turns around, looks for help. Can't find Bo Ellis. Turns around again, and he couldn't get rid of it. And there'll be a jump ball. Jimmy Cruz is playing a super basketball game for Indiana. He has really stabilized this Hoosier club. Lee and Cruz now jump it up. Tap back outside and Buckner comes up with a loose ball. Now Indiana chance to come up to a 12-point lead. Buckner now against Butch Lee down the left side. Spins back right. Lost it. Got it back. Flips it back out to Cruz. Jimmy Cruz now holds on to it. Walton comes out to pick him up. Down to the corner to Kent Benson. Benson now looks. Crosses over to Buckner at the key. Now Quinn back to the wing. Bounces back to Benson. Benson looks inside, out to Abernathy. Tommy against Whitehead. Top of the key dribble, working with it, going toward the right side, coming back left. Still going toward the right, now driving and stopping his dribble. Gives out to Buckner. Buckner looking inside, goes to the baseline, cut off, jump shot in the air by Quinn. Around, no good. Battle underneath. May had it, knocked away. Scramble for the loose ball, and a jump ball call. Ellis, Scott May, and Quinn Buckner all diving in there for the basketball. And they'll jump it up at the attacking circle of Indiana. Don, we're really seeing a battle between Tatum and May. They're both doing a lot of pushing in there, although I think Tatum's doing a little more right now. It's going to be interesting to see with if either picks up their fourth and with who it is and how soon it comes. Well, both have three personal fouls, and they're going head-to-head -head in a battle this afternoon. Tatum with 16 points. Scott May now with 13. Tip. Buckner had it, but it was tapped back outside the Whitehead, and now Tatum with it, and he gives away to Butch Lee. Marquette brings it back down the floor. Butch Lee with a basketball. 9.14 to go. Lee down the middle. Put the shot up. It's no good. Rebound. Lee again. Knocks away in a block by Benson. Walton picks up the ball to Lee again. He shoots it up and misses it. Rebound tip. Shotty May got it. Whitehead battles for it. He missed the shot. Knocks out of bounds. Indiana ball. And Al McGuire wants another timeout. Timeout on the floor. The score. Indiana 51, Marquette 41. McGuire coming out on the floor. Lloyd Walton also, and we'll be back after the 60-second break. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. Eight minutes and 59 seconds. All the remain on the clock here in this basketball game this afternoon from the Assembly Center at Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The Mid-East Regional Championship at Indiana 51, Marquette 41. Marquette hitting only three of 16 shots here in the second half for 188. Indiana 7 of 12 for 58 percent. Okay, Indiana will have a basketball. Jimmy Cruz against full court pressure now. Five by Marquette. Gets it into Scott Murray. May looking for help. Now dribbles it out of trouble across the timeline against Tatum. Scott holds it up, gives away to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz now holding in the corner. Walton coming out after him, and Walton called for a foul. Lloyd Walton reaching in. Here's the pass into Quinn Buckner. Buckner now on the dribble toward the right left corner. Quinn on the dribble against Lee. 
stopping and holding. Looking inside pass to Abernathy. Tommy baseline to Benson. Benson brings it back outside. Gives it away to Scott May. May now dribbles inside of Benson again. Knocked away and Tatum steals and saves it to Bo Ellen. Indiana by 10, but Marquette with the basketball. 8.25 to go on the basketball game. Here is Tatum now, working against Scott Murray. Lobs to the cross, goes to Walton with a pass. He goes to the baseline, back outside. The pass comes away to Tatum. Tatum now, back off to Walton. Again to Tatum. Tatum works it outside of Butch Lee. Now with to Bo Ellis, left wing. Ellis back away to Lee. Lee driving right side, trying to get past Buckner. Now fires a long jump shot, no good. Rebound Tatum, back up and going. Earl Tatum now with 18 points. 51-43. Scott May to Quinn Buckner. Up court pass to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz slows it down. 7.50 to go. Indiana by 8. And the Hoosiers trying to make it a 10-point lead. Jimmy Cruz now. Looks cross court. Can't find his man. And a jump ball called. Jimmy holding on to the basketball. And Butch Lee was right there with him. So Lee and Cruz now will have to jump into the attacking circle of Indiana. Lee stands 6'1". And Cruz standing at 6'5". Jump at the Indiana attacking circle. Herb Brown will toss the ball to the air. Here's the tip. It's controlled by who? Buckner fighting for it. It goes out of bounds. And who got it? Buckner cuts it last. It'll belong to Marquette. And a chance now for the Warriors to come back within six. Milwaukee, or Milwaukee. Marquette went seven minutes and two seconds without a score a moment ago until they got that basket. 51-43. Marquette on the attack now. The pass off to Tatum. Tatum against Murray. Fires it out to Walton. Walton now. Looking for the jumper. Can't find it. Goes to Butch Lee. Lee on the baseline drive. Inside. Passes underneath. Knocked away. Jimmy Cruz will be called for a foul. Cruz is called for a foul underneath. A good pass inside that time. And Bo Ellis will go to the free throw line. Ellis, a 75% free throw shooter. The first time today, however, he's been at the stripe. He has eight points, all scored in the first half. Tommy Abernathy has done a tremendous job on him. Cruz comes out for a rest. Bobby Wilkerson comes into the ball game. And Max, I got to think that Jimmy Cruz did one sensational job while in there. I'm sure he's a little weary, too. He hasn't played that much basketball recently. Marquette hit only one out of their last ten shots prior to that basket when I said they went seven minutes. Ellis at the line, free throw good. Bo Ellis now with nine points. This first point of the second half. There's 7.21 remaining in this game. It's 51 to 44. Indiana leading Marquette. Now it is stays that way as Bobby Wilkerson gets the miss. Free throw shot on the rebound. And Indiana now on the attack again with Wilkerson across the line against Tatum. Bounce pass to Abernathy. Tommy on the hold. Dribbles it to the top of the two. Look goes to Benson. Benny had it knocked away. Saves it. Goes in the corner to Quinn Buckner, and he threw it away. Quinn was trying to go baseline to Scott May with a pass. Wendy Epp interrupt this Indiana University basketball game for this special weather bulletin. The National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for persons in Warren, Fountain, and northern Vermillion counties in west central Indiana. The warning is in effect until 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A severe thunderstorm was indicated by radar 15 miles west of Danville, Illinois at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it is moving toward the east-northeast at about 45 miles per hour. Scott May goes away to Bobby Wilkerson, and now Indiana a chance again. Soft that lead. They lead 51-44. Walton against Wilkerson. Toward the corner to bounce past to Scott May. May now dribbling against Tatum. Puts it back outside to Abernathy. Now to Benson. Inside to uh, May. Lost it. Got it back, and he stepped, stepped on the line. Or bounced it on the line one. And Indiana, Butch Lee, left side to Bo Ellis on the wing. Ellis bounces to Whitehead. Whitehead holding. Back outside to Lee. Lee on the baseline, holding against Wilkerson. Puts it away to Walton. Lloyd Walton now, dribbling it back out front. Walton holding up a fist. Walton gives to Tatum, now away to Lee. Butch Lee with a basketball, inside of Whitehead. Whitehead looks, comes back outside. It goes away to Tatum, turn around, jumper in the air, it's no good. Rebound, Tom Abernathy. Abernathy puts it with a Bobby Wilkerson. Great position on Abernathy's part. Wilkerson now across the midcourt stripe, bounce to Abernathy. Tommy on the dribble. Goes for the top of the key, looking for help, giving it away to Scott Murray. 51-44 the score, 5.33 to go, Indiana leader. 
Here is Buckner bouncing away to Tom Abernathy. Aber looking inside on the dribble now. Working it to the top of the lane. Goes to Scott May with a pass. Made rise. Fakes the shot. Goes back to Abernathy. Tommy bounces away to Quinn Buckner. Buckner now. Holding onto the basketball into Benson. Turns around. Fires away. Traveling violation on Benson. That is four straight times now. Four straight times that Indiana's gone down the floor and turned it over. Here is Lloyd Walton. Walton down the lane. To the baseline. Cut off. Goes back outside to Tatum. Now where to lose. Lee trying to penetrate. Does. Shot blocked away. Goal tending call against Tim Benson. So Bush Lee gets his sixth point of the game. Bobby Knight didn't like that goal tending call at all. He thought the ball was still on the way up. 51-46. Indiana by five. Full court pressure being applied by Tommy, or by Marquette. Tommy Abernathy will inbound. Abernathy now. Against the press by Marquette as Buckner will bring it up the floor across the timeline. Quinn now spins away from Butch Lee. Stops his dribble working on the left side. Gives outside of Tom Abernathy. Now with a move. Scotty dribbles. Inside drive. Shot knocked away. Battle for it underneath. Scramble. It's May on a jump ball. Oh, Lloyd Walton. Scott May tried to help him up. And Walton jumping around out there. Unhappy about the battle underneath. That something wasn't called. So Walton getting really upset about the fact that there was a real physical test underneath that time and he wasn't the winner. Al McGuire was trying to coax the technical there. He was telling Walton to go to the official half for a technical. 51-46 to score. Walton. Bobby Knight can't believe that the officials are letting him get away with it. Bo Ellis. Bo Ellis has stepped in the jump. Ellis and Scott May, the tap, and it's controlled by Walton. Walton on the break. Down the left side. Passes away to Butch Lee. Shot is in the air. In and out. No good. Rebound. Ken Benson knocked away in a foul. Bo Ellis is called for the foul. On Ellis. That is the third of the ball game. For Chuck it. That's the third foul on Ellis. 51-46 to score. So it'll be Kent Benson going to the free throw line, the 17th foul against Marquette. Two have been called in this game in the second half on Indiana. Benson has really been shut off here in the second half. He has only one basket. He has just not gotten a shot. Marquette playing excellent defense. So Benny goes to the free throw line. First time today, shot is up, it's good. Benson now with 15, an opportunity for one more, 68% free throw shooter on the year. Averaging 17.1 points a ball game. Benson for one more try. Eyes it, flies it, hits it. 16 now for Benson. 53 to 46 to score. Indiana leading Marquette right now by a total of seven again. Here is Walton. Right side pass to Tatum. On the baseline drive. Stop. Threw it away. Whistle blows. What have we got? Indiana basketball. Tatum a pretty May. May now bringing it up the floor to Abernathy again. Abernathy gives up to Quinn Buckner and Rosenberger. Now the ball game for Marquette against Quinn. Bounce pass to Benson. He fakes it inside on the pass. Comes out to Abernathy. Tommy holding top of the key to May. Passes inside to Benny. Shot up the great play. Benson now with 18 and Benny cut across the key and May hit him with a perfect jump pass. Rosenberger. Right side pass Walton. Back to Rosenberger. Rosenberger to the right wing, 55-46 IU by nine. Here's a jumper by Rosenberger in the corner, no good, whistle blows. And a foul call underneath, who's it on? Tommy Abernathy picks up the first goal. So Abernathy has got his second foul of the ball game, and that's gonna send, I believe, check it, they're gonna take it out of bounds. Can you believe Marquette hitting only 5 of 27 in this half for 18%? That is really some kind of shooting, isn't it? Here comes Bernard Toon into the ball game, replacing Jerome Whitehead. So Marquette will tra- change at center. Ward Walton will inbound the ball for Marquette. He does, he gets it into Toon. Toon faking, lost it, and Buckner on a steal, and then he steps in the line. So Quinn 
with a tremendous defensive play. Just didn't come up with it. But the fans here from Indiana are giving him a big hand. Walton again will inbound. He does the ball of it. Hot side of Rosenberger. He gives it off to Tatum. Right side of Walton. Walton on the wing. Back to Tatum. 21 foot jump shot. Good. Earl Tatum. His 20th point of the ball game. Full court pressure. Scott May against Tatum. And Scotty May brings it across the timeline. And it's knocked away by Tatum. A fast break. Abernathy knocks it out of bounds. Tries to save it, but he steps in the line. What a play by Tom Abernathy. He saved a fast break bucket. There. Looking inside, goes to Bernard Toon. Toon driving left to the baseline. Cut off, shot up. He got it. Great move by Bernard Toon for his fourth point of the game. Tommy Abernathy bounces to Quinn Buckner. The break across the timeline and a double dribble. Bobby Knight off the bench. He can't believe that call and nobody else can. They call double dribble on Buckner and Mark Cut gets the basketball back. Indiana, a five-point leader. Lloyd Walton now with the basketball. Directing traffic for Mark Cut. Three minutes exactly. Left in the game. Here is Tatum. Tatum off to Bernard Toon. Toon back to Tatum. Tatum driving a drive across the key. Passes it inside of Walton. Back to Tatum. 22-foot shot. Good. Tatum now with 22. Indiana three-point leader. Bobby Wilkerson takes the pass across the timeline. And Wilkerson holds on, just to Tom Abernathy. 2.36 to go in the ball game. Bounce pass to May. Breaking, driving, shooting. It is good! Good May! What a shot! He's got 15! Indiana the leader, 57 to 52 over Marquette with 2.29 to go in the timeline. What a tremendous basketball game. Here is Tatum now, left wing, back outside of Bo Ellis, inside of Toon. Bernard Toon driving, shooting, scoring! Bernard Toon with his second great move, he's got six. Bobby Wilkerson now, bringing it up the floor, across the timeline against Rosenberger. Knocked away, stolen, and knocked out of bounds, it'll belong to Indiana. Don Marquette went five for 27, now they've gone six for seven in the last three minutes. 57-54. Indiana wants a timeout with two minutes and six seconds to go. Timeout on the floor. The score, 7 by cut 54. We'll be back in one minute. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. Two minutes and six seconds left in this basketball game. Indiana leading by cut 57-54. Tom Abernathy will try to make the inbounds play. Abernathy fires it into Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson across the timeline. Slows it down and gives it to Quinn Buckner. Buckner now on the dribble. Works it outside against Jerry Rosenberger. Passes away to Tom Abernathy. And Abernathy, top of the key, dribbles left side. Knocked away. Stolen by Bernard Coon. He lost it. And Scotty May steals it right back again for Indiana. 1.47 to go. Here is Quinn Buckner across the timeline. Buckner down the left side of the wing. Outside pass to Abernathy. Now away to Kent Benson. Then he holds on to it. On the dribble, looking for help. Gives to Buckner. Quinn now holding the ball with 1.34 to go. Outside again to May. Three-point Indiana lead, 57-54. Abernathy now with a basketball against Bernard Toon. Abernathy holds on, flips away to Scott May. May holding outside. He dribbles at once, gives to Quinn Buckner. Buckner now working against Rosenberger. Buckner on the dribble. Dribbling left side, back to Murray. Scotty brings it back outside again with a minute 10 to go. And there's a foul. Earl Tatum just picked up his fourth foul. Earl Tatum with four personal fouls. And, and the rebound of Marquette's Jerry Rosenberger. So now, Rosenberger across the timeline with a minute two to go. Lloyd Walton passes to Earl Tatum. Tatum against Murray. Tatum on the dribble. Fires it outside of Walton. Walton now goes to Neary in the corner. Back outside of Walton. 51 seconds to go. Walton now. Looking, faking, giving to Bo Ellis. Shot short. Rebound. Ken Benson plays it for IU. Fires away to Bobby Wilkerson. And Wilkerson plays it down the floor with 39 to go. Indiana, 39 seconds away from the NCAA Final Four. Wilkerson to Benson. Benny back outside to Abernathy. Off to Scott May. 30 seconds to go. 
Indiana, Scott May to Tommy Abernathy. Abernathy holding on, and a ball on Tatum, and he's out of the game. Earl Tatum commits his fifth foul, and fouls out of the game. 22 points for Tatum. A phenomenal contest tonight for Earl Tatum. A tremendous basketball player for Marquette. And now, with time out of the floor, we'll keep it right here. 25 seconds to go. Indiana, 57. Marquette, 54. It'll be Scott May going to the free throw line. Al McGuire acting up again. Al has really been complaining this half. I'm not sure, Don, that he hasn't spent more time complaining than he has coaching. But that uh, remains to be seen. At any rate, uh, McGuire, a heck of a coach. Indiana in this half hitting 9 of 14. And as we mentioned, Marquette, 5 of 27 at one point, but now 6 of 7 here in the end. And Tatum, who is the guy who really has been putting it in there, is now on the bench. And the Hoosiers definitely have the advantage here with Tommy Abernathy. And remember him on Thursday night? He's the guy who put him through. And Indiana trying to move into the final four last year, you remember? They failed it at this point, but today they've got the upper hand. Well, with 25 seconds to go, Indiana will be at the free throw line with a three-point lead. The Hoosiers fighting off the number two rated team of the country, the Marquette Warriors. A strong first half comeback by Marquette. Put him with an only one point, trailing by only one of the half. They took the lead very briefly on their first shot of the second half, and Indiana came back, roared to a 10-point lead, has held on ever since. For the game now, Indiana 26 to 46, 57 percent. Marquette 24 of 63, and Al McGuire has picked up his second technical. Well, McGuire got a technical foul. I can't believe he got it. So Abernathy now goes to the line. McGuire just picked up a technical foul. He may get another one. Shot is up by Aber. Good! Tommy Abernathy with his ninth point of the game. He'll have one more, and then it'll probably be Abernathy or made of the line again. Abernathy fires. Good! Now it's five points, and it's out of sight. 25 seconds to go. 59-54. Abernathy again. No good this time. And Tommy with a, gives Indiana two out of three from the free throw line. Bobby Knight with a smile on his face back. He just looked up at the clock. And Indiana with a five-point lead. Tommy will inbound it. Abernathy for Wilkerson. Wilkerson fouled by Walton. So Lloyd Walton picks up his third personal foul. I want to tell you, everybody right here at the table with us is just shaking a tremendous emotional moment for Indiana Walkers into the strike Bobby with four points in the game all in the first half free throw he got it Bobby Wilkerson with five 60 54 Indiana's got it second shot good again six for Wilkerson 24 seconds left. Puts Lee down the floor for Marquette. Shot is up good. Lee scores his eighth win of the ball game. Full court pressure. Another foul. Walton, I believe, got the foul again. 61, 56 the score. 17 seconds to go. And again, Indiana will go to the free throw line. 61, 56. Fans starting to leave this place. You can bet none of them are IU fans. Tommy Abernathy goes to the free throw line. Abernathy to the stripe. Nine points to his credit. A one and one again. Tom eyes it. Flies it. Hits it. Tommy Abernathy with 10. An opportunity for one more. 62-56. Second shot. Good again. Tommy now with 11. Indiana 63, Marquette 56. Down to four, Butch Lee driving, shot is up and no good. Lee now fought for it, tipped up. Ten seconds to go. Indiana's Bobby Walker's has got it. Fast break to Buckner. Twin drive. Shoots it up. Go! One second. It's over. Bobby Knight on the bench. They're jumping up and down. Indiana's on to the final four. What a ball game! 
55, 56, Indiana by nine at the horn. What a tremendous feeling for this Indiana ball club. Max, I don't know he could say any more. Don, I think the thing that was really interesting was to see the emotions of Bobby Knight with two seconds to go, Buckner, the clear shot. He was jumping up and down like a high school cheerleader, and it was really great to see him because he's so reserved most of the time, but not now. Well, we'll pause now, and we'll be back for the celebration after the 60-second break. This is the WIRE Hoosier Energy Basketball Network. And, but I'll tell you one thing, there's celebration for Indiana fans here tonight. What a ball game. Indiana wins at 65 to 56 over number two Red and Marquette. A tremendous basketball game all the way. Marquette never gave up. They kept coming back. And only in the final 30 seconds or so, actually 25 seconds, was it really decided and a tremendous, tremendous victory for Indiana. They are 30 and 0 on the season. They go to the NCAA Final Four in Philadelphia next Saturday, Max. And a I can only say this is about as emotional a moment as I've ever spent at a microphone. Well, it's been a tough way to go. They had a tough round, uh, as we said early in the year. Only Alabama probably had it tougher because they had to play us. But they've played everybody tough, and they've made it to the Final Four now, and it's really setting up, Don, as a possibility of an All-Big Ten final, you know. Michigan is already there, so the Hoosiers now will play the winner of UCLA and uh, Arizona. So it's going to be a tough one out there. But Indiana with a veteran team coming back, doing what they could not do last year when Scott May got hurt. This year they were healthy all the way. They are still undefeated. Well, let's look at the individual scoring while we have a moment here. First of all, for the Marquette Warriors, eight points for Butch Lee. Lloyd Walton scored two points in the ball game. That had to be one of the keys, Max. Only two points for Lloyd Walton. And, and uh, Bo Ellis in the second half picked up only one point. So those were the two key guys that Indiana really took the game away from. Walton with two. Jerome Whitehead with seven. Bo Ellis with a total of nine. Only one in the second half. Earl Tatum with 22. Six for Bernard Toon. And two for Gary Rosenberger. For Indiana, Quinn Buckner had seven. Bobby Wilkerson, six. 18 for Kent Benson. Scott May with 15. Tommy Abernathy with 11. Two for Wayne Radford and two for Jimmy Cruz. One for Rich Balavich. Top three scores again for IU. 18 points for Kent Benson. 15 for Scott May. 11 for Tom Abernathy. The three top scores for IU here this afternoon. The three top for Marquette. Eight, uh, 22 points out of Earl Tatum who fouled out in the final seconds of the ball game. Also, a nine-point effort out of Bo Ellis and eight points for Butch Lee. Those are the top three scores for Marquette. Max, a look at those teams. To sit. Well, I'll hold on here a second. Let me just give you the other scores from this afternoon's other regional finals. In the Midwest, it was Michigan over Missouri, 95 to 88. So Michigan into the final four against the East winner, Rutgers, who beat BMI this afternoon, 91 to 75. The only game yet to be decided today, UCLA and Arizona, out of the West Coast at Pawnee Pavilion. Max, a look at those team stats. The only team stats I really have here, Don, Indiana ended up hitting 27 to 47 for 57 percent. Marquette, only 23 of 64 for 36 percent. You just can't hardly win basketball games, and it's really a tribute to them that they stayed in as long as they did with that kind of shooting. As we mentioned as we went along, only 5 of 27 at one point, but then they came on strong with 6 of 7. And now, here comes the ball club back. Uh, I don't know where they've been, but they're coming back out. We'll see if we can intercept somebody, Don. Well, Quinn Buckner, Bobby Knight, uh, and Ted Benson are the three guys who are back out of the floor. I don't see any of the rest of the team coming out. They're going for a TV interview. So they're going for television interview only. So apparently there's not going to be a post-game celebration or a, a tournament presentation or anything like that. Only to the second place club. So that's the story. And uh, again, Indiana now 30-0 in the season. Marquette finishes with a 27-2 record. Definitely a tremendous basketball team, certainly deserving of the number two ranking in the country. UCLA, of course, and Arizona battle in the West. 
to decide Indiana's opponent next Saturday in Philadelphia. We'll just remind our fans right now, and probably a couple more times before we leave the air, that we'll be on the air next Saturday from Philadelphia at 355 with a Bobby Knight pregame show over most of these same network stations. So we hope you'll join us for that. And uh, Max, I don't know what really we can add to that, except that uh, it's just a tremendous, tremendous victory, and everybody here I know has just got to be so happy. It's, it's hard to really explain the emotion involved. Well, it was so disappointing last year. That's the thing you keep thinking about was last year, how disappointing. And this year, this ball club we really was not given the chance of uh, being quite as tough as last year, but have really come on strong. I do have the individual stats here just quickly pick out a few. Benson had a great afternoon, 8 of 12 from the field, and Scott May, 7 of 10 for uh, Marquette Lee, 4 of 18. And that's the kind of shooting, I think, the comparison that really made the difference here. Indiana hung in tough. Marquette don't take a thing away from that ball club. The only thing I might fault him would be that Al McGuire uh, spent more time baiting the officials in the second half than perhaps he did coaching, and Indiana just kept boring in. Well, I don't know what else we can say here from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Here comes Benson and Flynn Buckner and Bobby Knight back out again. I don't know if they're going to be for another interview or not. Max, you might holler at them, see if you might be able to get them. We might be able to get somebody over here at the microphone. Boy, I sure hope so. Bobby and Quinn and Kent coming across the floor now. Well, I don't think we're going to get a Max is hollering at him, but I think they're going off the floor, and there was no way they could hear Max calling for him. That's all right. No problem. We'll just wind things up by saying Indiana the winner again here this afternoon, 65 to 56 over a tremendous Marquette basketball team. At a time to Philadelphia, Max Gervin, and we'll be there next Saturday, starting again at 3:55 with the Bobby Knight pregame show. Don, let's don't wait 200 years the next time. <laughs> Again, the final score here today, Indiana 65, Marquette 56. Today's game brought to you in part by Hoosier Energy. Hoosier Energy, the electric power supplier for 17 REMCs. Our next broadcast of IU Basketball is this coming Saturday when Indiana meets the winner of this afternoon's UCLA-Arizona ball game in the Mideast Regional, or rather for the, in the Final Four at Philadelphia, the Bobby Knight pregame show again next Saturday at 3.55. We hope that you'll join us on most of these same network stations. Now for Max Gerben, this is Don Fisher 